Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. This is, I believe, what we're going to call, subject to change, KC Tool Hall number 73. So, I'm kind of trying to piece this together. I've covered it these last couple. Some of this stuff dates way back. Some of it's more recent. It's sort of how can I, like, compile the orders and deal with the delays and everything to still make a somewhat decent tool haul for you. And that's what we're going to try to do here. So I've crunched the numbers and kind of stared at the packing slips and divvied things up to where I think it's sort of functional. And uh, I want to start by saying any order that you place will get a bit of thanks. If you exceed $75, you get free shipping. If you exceed $100, you get the German Tool sticker pack. So we did that on this order or this combination of orders. Also, before we proceed, I want to tell you down below in the description, I do timestamps. That way, if you want to spoil the video, I typically have things in the thumbnail. Sometimes I hide them from you. Uh, you can scroll down. You can reference it there. If you want to go back and say, man, you know, what was that thing that he showed in that video? I want to, want to go buy that now. I have them linked. I do that for your convenience. Now, what we're going to do is just jump right in. And I'm going to tell you, this is sort of a hodgepodge. You might have to wait on me to find some items on packing slips. But in the previous tool haul, we brought in one of these. And that was sort of my guinea pig. And this is totally a different one. Yes, it is. It's a uh, Viha in a beautiful blue and black finish. It is a uh, T40, basically. $10.17. Again, this kind of dates back to when they're starting to like close out the Viha stuff. So uh, no crazy plans or anything with that. Now, moving on, uh, we're going to go with, let's see here. Like I said, gotta find it. This was $9.99. This is one of those things. It's from Philo. It is their part number, 57551. <laughs> and uh, I had wanted to try one of these. There's several different brands that make these. This one was the most economical. They're just so vastly different than anything that we have over here. This is definitely not something that I needed. I'm good on that front. Granted, what I have isn't great. It's just cheap, but it's worked for me. I mean, shoot, two decades or however long I've had the thing. And what am I talking about, you ask yourself? Well, it's from Philo, and it's totally not something that you would think of coming from Philo. But uh, if you look at this and you're like some sort of a precision screwdriver, you know, thing that'll take bits, you know? I mean, good Lord, man, did you really need that one? We, we could have done without it. Well, not quite, although that is what it looks like. But trained eyes might have noticed that there's like... A tether or is that wire and if you're thinking it's wire it's like wait that's an alligator clip in there isn't it and the answer is yes the other answer is good lord why did I not take this out of the packaging ahead of time because it is a straight-up nightmare to get this thing moving in the uh, outbound direction so I do apologize on that front it's finally visible and luckily the cap didn't come off and it's free and I'm totally never going to be able to put it back in there if I want to use it. So, what is it, you ask? Well, this is a German-made rubber band. I uh, don't, don't really care about anything else here, but this, you know, you never see the rubber bands anymore. And this Philo product, well, it's one of the only ways I knew to get it. Uh, you can see this one's red. I would have preferred blue, green, yellow, natural rubber color, black even. Uh, red, not really my thing with rubber bands, but elasticity is on point. You can see we can cross it over here, figure eight. It was in the quad fold configuration there. We've got mm, not very good slingshot capability from this one, but it could be flung quite nicely. I think that's where this German rubber band is going to excel is in the flinging department. Case in point, we'll go for that white tag. Bullseye. How do we know? Send it over to the other side. Beautiful, right? What's this? It's the collateral. It's what we had to get to get the rubber band. And if you're curious what this is and you haven't pieced it together yet with that thrilling take on the rubber band, it's a test light. So it's standard affair, right? Pretty much. It's just the alligator clip. You got the crimp. Is it soldered or is it crimped? It's just crimped. I was thinking this one might be soldered. My guess, based on how similar these look, I couldn't imagine, you know, Philo making this or Stavilla making it, so on and so forth. I would have to say there's probably some company that makes test lights and then they just, you know, resell them. I don't even know if this is labeled Philo anywhere. Uh, it does have made in Germany. I'll try to show this to you later. That's 6 to 24 volts. Um, 
Looks like it's showing a fuse. It's knurled quite nicely, I have to say. Like, let me kind of try to showcase this to you now. So the knurling is pretty aggressive. I like it. Uh, you can see right there through that slot, that is going to be what I believe is the bulb. Oh, this actually does screw on. It's not like a little cheap rubber cover like we get over here. And that's a very fine tip. This might actually be advantageous to me. Uh, maybe on like the micro fuses, I'll actually prefer this one. But yeah, it's a test light. And this was the most economical one. I'd had it on a wish list almost ever since I discovered KC Tool. It was just one of those things that stood out to me. And I was like, man, that's so different than over here. Of course, over here, what do we have? 90% of the time, it's an acetate handle, right? That's clear view. Uh, it's got your little incandescent bulb in there. And then it kind of has a similar deal. Typically, though, I will give whatever we have, whether they're American or import, it's a much thicker wire there. Um, but yeah, that's what this is, is a little Philo test light. And I can't tell you how excited I am to actually use the thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll try to get that in some, like, some limelight action for you. But it's just one of those things. It was 10 bucks, and I kind of think it was like moved into like the clearance or you know sale price or something on page 21 that no one gets to. And I was like, now's the time. So <laughs> that's what we have there from Philo. Uh, moving on, I think I need to change pages here, if I'm not mistaken. I'll cycle over. And this one kind of ties in nicely with when we showcase the ergonics with the striking cap. If you missed that video, Philo Ergonics, your black and yellow that you love so much, now available with striking caps. This is also from Philo. It's their part number 63697. Set me back 2825. It is a two piece set. I should say, I believe this was tool of the day. That's, that's why we brought it in. Oh, wow, that was my toe. Uh, it's okay, it wasn't too heavy. But uh, the good news is, we didn't drop what we were going to showcase next, which is this. This is the Philo Plus Minus set. Now, this is something more and more of the stuff at work comes in, and it's posy, and I hate it. Like electrical, that's, that's about it. And I have to go in and like, I can't just make do. Like I don't, there's no other option. It's not like it's a hex head. There's no alternative method. I've got to have palsy drivers, right? So I brought in the VHA stuff. Now, and it's not in all of them. I haven't figured out what it is. I don't know if there's like a shortage or like it just, they ran out of screws and they threw something else in. I'm getting the plus minus stuff. <laughs> it's still primarily palsy that I have to deal with. Uh, this all used to be US based and everything was just slotted really and then some of it became Philips and then as uh, I guess some European company bought them they finally like transitioned over to Posi and yeah it's just rendered decades old screwdrivers useless but this is a deal that's literally about all it is good for is like the terminal blocks and stuff along those lines uh, there's a chance of some of like the more advanced electronics I'm planning on playing around with, with some of the cars eventually uh, we might actually need it but the two-piece set it's basically a number one and a number two <laughs> it's a shame like there's all this panel back here where they could have like explained it to people uh, but as you can see the plus minus one is going to be 80 millimeter that would be your shaft length and then the two is a traditional 100 millimeter or four inch shaft so we'll get the card out of the way uh, again this is not something that you really need in your arsenal unless you need it in your arsenal and if you do you probably have one <laughs> or multiple drivers already uh, and there's kind of some pros and cons to these. If you have the wrong size, like let's say that we had a, a number two and we just have the number one driver there, you put a ton of torque on the flat. Let me, I don't know that I can showcase this super well, but I will try for you. So if that looks a little bit funky to you, well, it should because it's kind of like a two-in-one type of a deal. From this angle, it looks just like a Phillips, and you're like, oh, cool. And then I flip it over here, and you're like, what in the wing nut is that? And that looks like a slot, uh, but with like this thing here. And so it's kind of like I said, just a combination. I'm no expert on this stuff. I don't have to use these very often. I wish I didn't have to use them at all, to be straight up honest with you. But they are becoming a little bit more commonplace. And when this was tool of the day, I thought this is the time. As a bonus, since again, it is typically electrically related, uh, these are insulated drivers. 
Did we have an insulated phyllo? I'm not sure that we did, but we do now. Uh, this is not a slim line, sadly. I think it actually was. Let me hang on. Uh, it doesn't advertise it. Yeah, it just says phyllo plus minus for electrician screws. Something I read said slim line. Yeah, okay, it's right here on the packing slip. They're calling this from Casey Tool again, part number 63697. Description E Slim Insulated Two Piece Plus Minus Z. And then it's Posi slotted screwdriver set. So I guess this one would be Posi based, which again would work better because that's where this stuff is originating for me. But yeah, I guess that's not super slim. It's also not super fat, but. Uh, typically when I think of slim, I think of like a little little smaller than that, but yeah, if you flip it around, that crazy design there, that's going to be, I guess, our uh, Posi 1 and our Posi 2, so it's in the arsenal now. I might be better off with those going to work. We'll have to wait and see, but like I said, I do, it sort of depends what we get into and how far we take things and what other people bring us, but there's a chance we could be using that here, so we'll kind of kind of wait it out patiently and see what happens. Coming around, we are going to stick with Philo. This was a, a long anticipated item. It was $10.70. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the three eighths and the quarter are probably going to be way, way more utilized. Um, this is either an item that you, you're going to need it and like it and appreciate it and love it or you're just you don't have any use for it at all and what we're talking about is their part number 62897 again currently listed at 1070 it's the t-handle and it's the half inch drive this is what i needed to kind of complete the set and again some people you're never going to touch these if you have them you'll never touch them unless you explicitly make it a point uh, for other people that prefer like the hands-on, like the feel, you either know what I'm talking about or you don't. Some people don't care, you just shoot things with an impact and call it good. But like for valve train stuff, these T-handles are fantastic. You get a real good feel out of them. And uh, they're super comfortable, probably the most comfortable T-handles I've ever used. Again, half-inch drive, how often am I going to reach for that and use it? Not near as often as the smaller sizes, but I liked it well enough, and the price point was low enough that I thought, you know what, now's the time. Uh, kind of like that test light. I mean, 10 and 9, that's 20 bucks for a test light and a half-inch drive T-handle. Uh, I, th I think we did pretty well there, I have to say. Uh, again, I'm th pretty confident those were tool of the day, so way less than 28, maybe 14 to 20, somewhere in that range, I would guess. Uh, what I have to do now is fish real quick. This is what fell and hit my toe a second ago. It's from Vera, and it is their part number, 00882. It's going to set you back 1697. And what is it, you ask? Well, it's a stubby bit holder. And if you think, like, oh, wow, I didn't know they did them in yellow. This is like some limited edition thing you didn't tell us about, you jerk. Like, I would have loved to have had that. All the collectors are like, no, it's like a honeycomb. Can't believe I missed it. Well, you didn't miss it. When I bought this, this was like new. They had just introduced some of this stuff. But the reason, typically you think yellow and black with Vera, right? And it's, you know, the craft form chisel drivers, you know, that you have striking caps and beat the snot out of. Because they actually, that's one of the few striking cap drivers that they say explicitly, use these as a chisel. <laughs> You know, and they still apparently honor the warranty there. There's lots of people that make striking caps. Not many actually endorse using them as a chisel. Not to free or turn stuck screws, but use it as a chisel. And this, as you might have guessed, is not striking cap. And if you look at that and you're like, what? This is special edition, jerk. Well, no, check that out. That says EPA, but uh, over here it would be ESD, right? Electrostatic discharge, and this is going to mitigate that. So if you're working with sensitive electronics, uh, computers, you know, chips, whatever it may be, this is a little stubby and that's going to accept. This is just a bit of things right here. I was going to say it better accept it. <laughs> So that's just your stereotypical phyllo bit of things plugs right in uh, if you have something you know where you've got to have a little height but you like the stubby feel for quick and turning you can run whatever length bit as long as it's standard quarter inch stuff and it's just an ESD bit driver so was this tool of the day too or was it just something brand new 
Uh, man, this goes back so long, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it brought it in, and I think it looks great. It's going to be a nice little addition. And I don't, I know I had Vera stubbies, but I did not have a bit holding stubby. So it might have not been. It might have just been me trying to piece together free freight on something. Plus, again, it was new, so it probably caught my attention. Uh, coming in next, this actually came with some of the Hazette stuff. And I debated putting it there, but I opted not to. This is from Stavilla, and it is their part number 12695N. This one goes back, and again, it's before the Cuttix. Okay, like I said in the Cuttix video, I was like, it's a shame because you're going to see me bring in like a whole lot of knives. And it was mainly based off this Picard, right? I actually like this so well, and I was like, you know what, we need to bring some in and compare and contrast them. That's still the plan, but then the Cuttix kind of showed up unexpectedly. This guy right here, uh, it'll set you back $16.70, which really isn't that bad. That's the current price, too, not when I got it, so it's probably gone up. And again, $16 is as we speak, so I probably got it less than that. But this is a nice one. This is possibly granted i haven't used it haven't done anything with the blade you're going to see me do all that in person but uh this is made in spain so it's not german made if that matters to you but this is kind of just like the what i've always looked for in a box cutter again prior to using any of this stuff for the cuttix or anything or you know like the little milwaukee's i brought in several years ago i just always had the stereotypical old school some of them are fixed, like they're that old, but I prefer the retractables like this. And what this one is, is it's kind of like my wish list item of a box cutter. Again, prior to the Cuttix and trying all this other stuff. Why do I say that? Well, the stereotypical American marketed, I'm sure a bunch of them aren't made in America. But what we currently have is you have a much shorter height, right? So where this is fairly tall, like these three ribs and the texture there and there, like I'd say the others are maybe just this flat side only. And then where this one, when I turn it, like it's, you know, little different shapes, almost like a knife end or a handle on a steak knife. Uh, this is Texas steak knife, by the way. I don't know what you do in other parts of the world. <laughs> but uh, what we have typically now is like, for some reason, there's a bulge on everything, right? So when you look down this and it's pretty much flush, you know, just straight, parallel. When you grab box cutters now, like if you walk into Home Depot and get a box cutter, like some of them are bulky like this. And I don't like that because they often wind up in my pocket. And the bulkier they are, uh, the more uncomfortable they are to have there. And on top of that, this one's murdered out, which just makes it look like a uh, sinister knife in the dark. That also looks like the same blade structure in that uh, hazette that we just opened up. But that's full extension, coming back one slot, let's see. So closed, there's one, there's two. Two is where I cut everything but thick cardboard. And then three is going to be our full extension. That would be like motor boxes and stuff, super thick cardboard, right? So there's three positions, and it just it feels great in hand. This has not got the same... It's, very similar color scheme to the Z we looked at. This doesn't have that same aggressive tack to the coating. I also like that the selector switch is black. Usually, uh, the stuff I buy is like orange or yellow, which is great for visibility. That's one downside of this one is it's black, so it's going to be a little bit more apt to be like non-visible. Uh, leave it on a welding table, for example. Does it stand out as much as the orange or the yellow? No. Will you find it? Probably. <laughs> Eventually. Uh, but the selector shafts on those, whatever color they are, they're always like that stupid chrome plated color. I like that this one's black. It feels good in hand. While it doesn't have the tack, uh, it gives me a very positive feel. Now right here, if we take a look at this thing, you can see that it's saying open this way. And then this is push. So we're going to push as best I can with this thumb. And I'm going to try and slide it. Had to come up here so I could sort of see what I was doing. Let's take a look at the inside, shall we? Got a flipper over. Buzzkill. I was thinking we would have like blade storage here. Uh, there is not. You can see the casting. It looks like a very robust piece. Look at all those reinforcement ribs. Dots, of course, probably from the die or the casting. Uh, let me make sure there is nothing behind it. This blade, if I could read it, I think it says made in Sheffield. 
Would that make this British? <laughs> it might, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, there is sadly, whoops, these are always oily, if you're curious. There is sadly not another blade in sight, which is a shame. But uh, we will set this back down as best I can. Try to get it positioned in the rails. I think that's our closed position. So again, you can see like that little spring detent here for the front case. And I'm assuming I could just grab this guy. And we want to close, so we need to line it up. And then let me back this out so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, is that latched? By gosh, it is. Okay, well that wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be to reinstate, and it's functional. So I actually really like the form factor of this one. Obviously the blade is to be determined, we need to use it. Uh, it's light, but it's not Cuttix light. Like it's gonna be lighter than this significantly, but not quite Cuttix light. So it's probably just an aluminum uh, die cast, not magnesium or anything, but you gotta admit, it looks cool, and that's worth something. So, uh, ultimately, again, just like with that Hazette one that we got in, uh, we're going to just have to use these, see how we like them. Can't really tell you ahead of time. Just right now, I love the aesthetics, and I like the form factor. Downside, no spare blades. Plus side, I've got tons of razor blades. It's not the end of the world. It's, that, to me, is not specialty. That's like what I have. Snap-off stuff, I still kind of consider specialty. Mainly why? I don't have any. So, uh, coming in, I think we're to our last item. Yes, we are. And this one, again, it just didn't really have a home. It was part of another order. And then this and one of the Heiko Acetate... Uh, number two Phillips took a long time to come in, so I'm just putting it here, and uh, there's one downside to this one, and it's, it's the old color scheme, but this is from Vitz. It is their part number. Let's see here, 63086, quarter by 200 millimeter, and you're thinking like, if you just bought an 8 inch shaft with a number two Phillips, why? Do you, do you not have enough? You surely... <laughs> We know you've been getting the 100 millimeter, the four inch shafts, that's that's the testing plan, but surely somewhere along the line, you've got something that you could cobble together and uh, span eight inches if, you, if that's what you needed this to do. And well, yeah, I'd agree with you, but it's not quite what we did. What did we do? Well, you take a look at it and tell me. And this opens up another video. I'm not gonna say what it is, but some of you will know. If so, leave a comment down below. If you're thinking like, What's going on? Hmm, what is that? A bit holder? Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're still coming, still coming, still coming. I mean, eight inches, that's a lot to fit in the frame. And boom, the old color scheme. Now, I don't know if this is available in the new one yet. If it is, that's kind of a, a harsh reality. But I do have to say, I actually really like this color scheme. It's unique. It's just a situation where 90% of what I brought in in that color scheme comes in like looking like I've used it for several hours and a dirty job site. Uh, it just it gets dirty fast. But uh, just like we highlighted recently in Tool Hall 70 when I got those uh, new Vit, Pro, Vit Max Pro Plus for my nephew and myself, they've changed this where this had a huge kind of like a you know motorcycle gas tank, whatever you want to call it. Uh, had that huge, huge area with the uh, microfiber pads. They've kind of skinnied that out. So I guess if they did have this in the new color scheme, it would also be the new design back here. But yeah, this is just a quarter drive bit holder and it's eight inches long. So if I take this, we drop it in. And I should mention there's something special about this quarter drive bit holder. And it has not uh, got anything to do with holding quarter drive bits. What it has to do with is it's flexible all right kind of a kind of something that we left out there but yeah that's it uh the end here it looks like it's it's got a steel retaining ring and i'm assuming it's magnetic let's actually use the fine tip that we have access to sorry plus minus you're, you're reserved for stuff across the pond let's see if it's magnetic huh i can't really tell uh, let's try a hex key. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm having a heck of a time getting this bit in here. 
uh, is what we're struggling with back here. There we go. So it's a little cumbersome to get the bit going, but once it is, that's your stick up, that's your run out again. If you're running an eight inch flexible bit, you're probably not super worried about that, but there she is all assembled. And that's it for this tool haul. The next one, I'll go ahead and, uh, should I tell you or should I not tell you? Might not tell you. Um, it's going to be a sad one, um, but I've kind of, and it's a lot. Like It's a lot. We saved a ton of money, but it's also sad. So I'll see. If you've got any guesses, leave them down below. But uh, yeah, this is just kind of a hodgepodge stuff, but we got the Stavilla safety knife, which is actually pretty nice, minus not having extra blades, which isn't the end of the world, but uh, it's always cool when you have that integrated. There's really no integrated storage either. We picked up the beloved Philo T-handle and half-inch drive. I'm not sure how often I will use that, but I do think I'll actually use it in a 1070 or 10 bucks, whatever it costs. I'm willing to roll the dice on that, especially given how much I love the 3 8 one. Uh, the quarter gets a lot of use too, just because like 3 8 sockets don't clear valve covers, stuff like that. Uh, and then coming in, we got the plus minus set, which I'm not thrilled about having to get, but we've got them now, so it'll be our worth our while. Uh, we've got the Vera ESD Stubby, uh, which some of you will probably buy just because you like the color scheme, and it totally works. Like, it doesn't have to be ESD applications. It's just the tool's not living up to its full potential there, you know, if you're just using it standard. Uh, but it's definitely something you could do. And then, of course, we got the Philo Low Voltage uh, Test Light, which, again, it's just so different. <laughs> and it actually is made in Germany. That's stamped on that brass body. Uh, the knurling is fantastic. Uh, we'll see. We'll we'll be using that one just to kind of get a feel for it. And I believe that is it. So a little bit of everything. We got some Philo drivers, bit holders from Vera and Vit, Stavilla knife, uh, test light, and the T handle. And I'm um, getting the floor cleaned up, which is awesome. We also have, of course, this guy. Can't forget him. I don't know that I'll put him in the thumbnail, but uh, it is what it is. I also on this one. One of these orders, I was like probably trying to get free for eight, and so I added a ballpoint pin. 71 cents, you know the drill. Showed them a lot. I really do, like I said, though, like them. I like that they're blue color. They write well for me. Uh, only thing that would make them better is if they had like the Pilot G207, like rubberized grip, you know, where my finger rests. But uh, yeah, that is that. If you have used any of this stuff, what is your experience? What are your impressions with it? If you think you know where I'm going next, let me know. If you think you know what videos this possibly opens up, feel free to leave that down below. Uh, but that's about it. So if uh, you're in Europe and you watch these videos and you're always accustomed to test lights like this, when you get some time, you know, this afternoon, this evening, do yourself a favor and, like, pull up test lights. You know, like, go to Summit Racing and type it in or, you know, Amazon, whatever, and see what we have over here. I'm sure they're available over there. Most of them are imports, but uh, this is, like, super old-school semen, and uh, I was interested in it. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Uh, if you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. If you do that, you grab your Stavilla safety knife, store some spare blades in it, jump your charger across the creek, and ring the bell. YouTube just might let you know. We've got new tool videos out every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Texas time. Same thing on Wednesdays, automotive content, so on and so forth. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three. You can find us at Lone Star Mopars, the website, LoneStarMopars.com. And that's about all I've got. So the number one thing, hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. And uh, I've got to go find somewhere to display this German rubber band. So. I'll do that. You have a great weekend. I'll catch you back here next weekend for more action from the shop.